launch trajectory and countdown net. Pad is clear. 10, 9, 8. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Welcome to the webcast for the Transporter 8 mission. SpaceX's two-stage Falcon 9 rocket is currently scheduled to lift off in just under eight minutes from now from Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base, just a few hours north of our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. I'm Jesse Anderson, a manager for Falcon Production here at SpaceX, and I'll be your host as we follow Falcon 9 take 72 spacecraft to low Earth orbit and beyond. As you might have guessed, today's launch marks our eighth dedicated small sat rideshare program launch. And if you've been following along, this mission marks our second launch for today, 40th launch in 2023, and 239th mission of all time. On board the second stage are 72 spacecraft, including CubeSats, Microsats, a re-entry capsule, and orbital transfer vehicles carrying spacecraft to be deployed at a later time. All 72 spacecraft will separate from the second stage between 39 deployment events, which is scheduled to start around the T plus one hour mark. Although all 72 payloads will deploy within one deployment sequence, has started. views and telemetry will vary, out, vary throughout. In the middle of the deployment sequence, we will have a short blackout period, but as always, we'll bring you live coverage as it becomes available to us. Now we are currently working towards a T0 of 2.35 p.m. Pacific time, which is just about six and a half minutes from now. Weather is green and the range is ready to support. But if for some reason we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Hello everyone, I'm Krista Rhodes, a structures engineer here at SpaceX, and I'm joining Jesse today to cover the Transporter 8 mission. The rocket supporting our mission today is kind of like two rockets in one, the first stage and the second stage. The first stage will stage ignite one, all, RP1 load all nine complete. engines at T minus zero, and then lift off from the launch pad and take the vehicle through the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. When the two stages separate from each other, the second stage will light its single engine to propel the payloads to where they need to go for deployment. At the very top of the rocket, we have the payload fairing that protects our 72 spacecraft until the vehicle is outside the Earth's atmosphere, at which point the two fairing halves separate to expose them to the vacuum of space. And right below the fairing, we have our second stage, which houses our single Merlin vacuum engine, or MVAC engine, which will propel our payloads to their eventual destinations in space. And as a note, on today's mission is our tallest rideshare stack to date and will deliver the largest mass to orbit. You might be able to see this after fairing separation, so keep your eyes peeled. And after se fairing separation, you'll notice a shorter nozzle attached to our Merlin vacuum engine or MVAC engine. And this is because we don't need as much performance for the mission at hand today. And below the second stage is the black carbon fiber inner stage. And the inner stage connects the two stages and houses the center pusher that allows the first and second stages to separate during flight. And it also houses the MVAC engine that I mentioned moments Thanks ago. Thanks for pressing for strong back retract. And below that, we have the first stage, which we usually refer to as the booster. And the first stage makes up the bottom two thirds of the vehicle and has nine M1D engines at the bottom. And those nine Merlin engines do the bulk of the work to get the rocket off the ground and up to the thinner parts of Earth's atmosphere. It's also the primary part of Falcon 9 that we recover, refurbish, and reuse for multiple flights, which brings down the cost of regularly launching rockets. And at about two and a half minutes into flight, the first stage will separate and make its way back to Earth and attempt a land landing at landing zone four, as you can see on your screen, not too far away from the launch pad. And for those of you keeping track, today's mission marks this booster's ninth flight, having previously supported NROL 87 and 85, SARA 1, SWAT, and four Starlink missions. And if successful, this landing will also mark SpaceX's 200th landing of an orbital class rocket. 
and SpaceX first successfully landed a booster back on land in December of 2015 and successfully landed on a drone ship just a few months later in April 2016. Flight-proven first stages have launched about 90% of the last 100-plus missions since the start of 2022. Recovery and reuse are incredibly important for our teams to build the most advanced rocket fleet, fly rapidly and reliably, and propel us towards our goal of full and rapid reusability with Starship. Our goal with these missions is to provide small satellite operators competitive pricing, increased flight opportunities, and flexibility. We're flying some really cool payloads on this mission, including several different types of Earth observation and imaging, orbital transfer vehicles, student research projects, and several payloads intended to demonstrate and grow in-space technologies for our customers. Our customers today come from all over the world, supporting teams from 21 different countries, and include a range and include a range of organizations from DARPA, or Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, to the Vatican. Even the smallest satellites can make meaningful contributions to the care of planet Earth and our efforts to visit other worlds, and we're looking forward to providing a great ride to space for these 72 payloads on board today, just a few minutes from now. At T minus two minutes, we are currently waiting for the completion of locks loading on our second stage. And the white clouds that you can see circling Falcon 9 are completely normal and the result of our super chilled liquid oxygen coming into contact with the relatively warm ambient air at our launch site in Vandenberg. Stage two locks load is complete. And as you just heard, stage two locks loading has wrapped up and we are now waiting for Falcon 9 to go into startup at around T minus one minute. And at that point, the Falcon 9 computers will take over our launch countdown. Falcon 9 is in startup. And we just heard the call out that Falcon 9 is now in startup, meaning that both stages are now beginning to pressurize for launch and the flight computers have taken over. We're now waiting for a final go for launch from our launch director. LD is go for launch. At T minus 40 seconds, all systems are a go for launch of Falcon 9 with all 72 payloads on Transporter 8. T minus 30 seconds. We are T plus 35 seconds into flight. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower at Space Launch Complex 4 East. We are currently throttling down the engines in preparation, nominal. in preparation for Max-Q and great view you can see there on your screen of the vehicle. Max-Q is the point Falcon of- Falcon 9 is supersonic. 
Max-Q is the point of maximum aerodynamic stress that the vehicle will see on Max ascent. Max-Q. And great timing. We have just passed through Max-Q. Now we do have five events coming up in quick succession. That will be Miko, stage separation, stage one flip, SES one, and then the start of the boost back burn on the first stage. Now Miko is main engine cutoff. That's where we shut down all nine of those engines MVAC that- engine chill has started. That's where we shut down all nine of those engines that you can see burning there on your screen. That will help slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next event, which is stage separation. That is where the first stage will separate from the second stage. First stage will make its way back to Earth with stage one flip and the boost back burn, while the second stage will have SES one, or second stage engine start one, and that's where we will ignite the MVAC engine on the second stage as it propels our payload Falcon, to trajectory nominal. their targeted drop-off orbit. Again, those five events are coming up here in just about 15 seconds or so. That is Miko, stage separation, Stage one flip and boost back burn, as well as SES one. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. Stage one boost back and back ignition. And really cool views there. We just had Miko stage separation. You could see the first stage doing its flip maneuver and the boost back burn has begun on your right hand screen. You can see that short MVAC nozzle ignited. Very, very cool views. Now we're coming up on fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you can see the deployment of our fairing halves. They are now making their way back down to Earth. And we are coming up on the boost back burn here in a few seconds. Boost back burn boost conclusion. Boost back shutdown. And there we heard that call out for boost back burn shut down. And you can see on your left hand screen as those engines shut off. Stage one trajectory nominal. Great callouts there. Now the next major milestone coming up is the entry burn on our first stage, which is scheduled to occur around the T plus six minute mark. We're currently in our first of two M back burns. This burn should last for another four minutes or so. And as Jesse mentioned, the next milestone will be the first stage's entry burn coming up in about two minutes. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Falcon 9 performs two burns in order to land. The first of the two burns is entry burn to slow itself down before hitting the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Without this burn, we'd only be using the atmosphere and Falcon's drag alone to slow down Falcon 9, which adds extra stresses on the rocket. A single Merlin 1D engine relights for entry burn, and following entry burn, the booster will go through its final burn, the landing burn, which should slow Stage two trajectory nominal. Which should slow the vehicle down even more for a successful land landing. And as you can see on the left side of your screen, we have two out of Falcon's four hypersonic grid fins in view. And they measure four feet by five feet and help us guide the booster to the landing site by actively changing the vehicle's center of pressure. And you're also probably noticing some white puffs of gas from the first stage. And this is cold nitrogen from our attitude control system, which also helps us control the vehicle's descent. And again, the next major milestone we are waiting on is the beginning of our stage one entry burn, which is about 30 seconds away. And 
both altitude and speed are as expected for both our first and second stage. Stage one entry burn startup. And as you heard, our entry burn has now began and will last for another 20 seconds. Stage one entry burn shut down. Stage one FTS has saved. We've now completed a successful entry burn, and now that our entry burn has been concluded, the stage first one trajectory nominal. The first stage has one more burn left in preparation for landing. And as I mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to recover this booster for the ninth time today, and are targeting a land landing on landing zone four. Another key aspect of Falcon 9 is its landing legs, and Falcon 9's first stage is equipped with four landing legs made of carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb, and they're placed symmetrically around the, base, around the base of the rocket and deployed just prior to landing. We can expect that land, ent landing burn to begin in just a few seconds. Stage one landing burn. Landing leg deploy. And as you saw and probably just heard, we had a successful first stage landing at landing zone four. Stage two, turn all guys. Marking the ninth landing for this specific booster. It also marks SpaceX's 200th landing. Stage two, FTS has saved. 200th landing of an orbital class rocket. Next up, we are expecting the shutdown of the second stage MVAC engine in about 20 seconds. MVAC shutdown. And with successful cutoff of our orbit. With successful cutoff of our second stage engine, we have now heard the call and the call out for good orbital insertion. We are now tracking nominally. Coming up next, we have the second burn of our MVAC engine on board the second stage around the T plus 57 minute mark. We will be back in about 45 minutes to bring you live coverage of SES2, followed shortly after by the beginning of our payload deployments. Until then, enjoy these space views and we will see you soon. Expected loss of signal, Vandenberg.
look at the rockets from Mars and you just boggle the mind and mind and mind and mind. And the technology caught up to them. Welcome back to our coverage of the Transporter 8 mission. We've had a great mission so far with an on-time liftoff at 2.35 p.m. Pacific time. We recovered our first stage vehicle at landing zone four for the 200th landing and completed the first of two second stage burns. Now we're just a few seconds away from our second and last relight of our MVAC engine, and this will be a quick about three second burn. And there you could see the MVAC engine ignite very quickly. Again, just a three second burn. That was SES 2. Nominal deploy orbit. And Seco 2. And we just heard the confirmation of good orbit. So, with that, it looks like we're on track for payload deployments to start in about three minutes. As a reminder, there will be a total of 39 deployment events for our total 72 payloads that are on board the second stage. And if you're not familiar, our transporter missions are dedicated rideshare flights. And SpaceX is targeting at least three rideshare missions to sun synchronous orbit per year, in addition to opportunities for a ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch about once a week. And there are always some really neat payloads flying on transporter missions, and today's mission is no different. Of the 72 payloads on board the second stage today, we have CubeSats, Microsats, a re-entry capsule, and an orbital transfer, orbital transfer vehicles carrying spacecraft to be deployed at a later time. And we're about one minute out from the start of our first set of deployments. As a reminder, we'll have a short blackout period of no ground station coverage during our deployment sequence. And if you were not aware, ground station loss of signal, Mauritius and HBK. And if you were not aware, ground stations are how we get live camera views and telemetry, so only some of our deployments will be visible today.
As a reminder, there are a total of 72 spacecraft that will separate from the second stage between 39 deployment events. The first eight deployments will occur during a time where we won't have great access to ground stations and therefore we won't have any live views, but should be able to confirm deployment based on the telemetry and data that we get from the second stage. The next 15 deployments after that should have live views and data. Then we will enter into a blackout period where we should be expecting three deployment events. Once we regain signal around the T plus one hour and 14 minute mark, we should be able to confirm those three deployments and move forward with the rest of the mission. As always, if we're able to regain signal earlier than planned, we'll provide live views and updates as it becomes available. Now the first set of deployments should be starting here in a few seconds. Fossa set Ferox, separation confirmed. AII Delta, separation confirmed. JSAT, separation confirmed. Iris 1, separation confirmed. IV, separation confirmed. Iris 2, separation confirmed. Lemur 2, Embryonus, separation confirmed. Miser A, separation confirmed. And great news, we have confirmed eight deployments so far. As I previously mentioned, we were not able to have live views for those deployments, but we should be regaining ground station coverage here shortly and should have some live views of the next deployments that are coming up. Acquisition of signal, Dubai. Lemur 2, Nazia, separation confirmed. Lemur 2, Adam Alahi, separation confirmed. Swarm space fees 168 through 179, separation confirmed. Droid 1, separation confirmed. XIV, separation confirmed. Miser B, separation confirmed.
Tiger 4, separation confirmed. Newsat 40, separation confirmed. Newsat 41, separation confirmed. Expected loss of signal, Melindy. New sat forty three, separation confirmed. New SAT 42, separation confirmed. MUSAT 1, separation confirmed. A, B, A, first runner, separation confirmed. Tomorrow, R2, separation confirmed.
Gregoire, separation confirmed. Very cool to see some of those deployments live in space. That confirms 23 of 39 deployments so far. As I mentioned previously, we will be heading into a blackout period until we reach our next ground station around the T plus one hour and 14 minute mark. If we're able to gain coverage earlier than that, then we'll be sure to bring you live Expect views. The signal, Dubai. We'll be sure to bring you live views as it becomes available. So stay tuned and we'll see you again soon. First ISI satellite separation confirmed. Welcome back to the webcast of SpaceX's eighth dedicated SmallSat rideshare program mission. We had successful liftoff at 2.35 p.m. Pacific time from Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. So far, we have had a total of 24 confirmed separation events out of our 39 total. And we did have three deployment events during the blackout period, which we will hear confirmed over the next shortly.
cleared, ISI satellite, separation confirmed. Hot sat one, separation confirmed. Acquisition signals forward. Fourth ISI satellite, separation confirmed. Skycraft three, separation confirmed. Ghost 3, separation confirmed. and another great call out and views of another deployment. And I may have missed it earlier, but we did confirm that we did have that we did call out successful confirmation of the three deployments that happened in the blackout period. And we're well on our way into payload deployment, having had 31 successful deployments so far. DARPA's Blackjack Aces 2 separation confirmed. QPS SAR 6, Amateur 3, separation confirmed.
runner one, Fawcett, Delta, separation confirmed. Expected loss of signal, Coonhilly. Ion SCV 011, Savvy Simon, separation confirmed. DARPA's Blackjack, Aces 4, separation confirmed. DARPA's Blackjack Aces 1, separation confirmed. Varda's Winnebago 1, separation confirmed. Acquisition signal in EPIC.
DARPA's Blackjack Aces 3, separation confirmed. And with that confirmation, we've successfully deployed all payloads on today's mission. If you're interested, a full listing of today's payloads can be found over at SpaceX.com. We would like to thank all of our Rideshare customers for their support on today's mission, and of course, our viewers for your continued support. As I mentioned earlier, Transporter 8 marks SpaceX's 40th mission of the year. That's 40 launches in just six months, and it marks our 200th landing of an orbital class rocket. It's taken a lot of hard work and dedication from our teams to get to this milestone today. And to give you an idea of what 200 launches and landings look like, we'll leave you with an animation showcasing our past and current launch manifest. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon.